I'm Frank Williams, and we have here on the show today, which I'm proud to say, one of San Francisco's finest, Sheriff Ross Mercurini here. We're going to ask him a few questions about him on the personal side. Find out about the sheriff. Find out who he is, what make him what he is. So I'd like to introduce you to Sheriff Ross Mercurini. Thank you, Frank. Good how, to see you. How are you today? Uh, I'm well. But we'd like to have you on here because we want the, uh, viewers to get to know who you are. Ross Mercurini. Who is Ross Mercurini? <laughs> so let's start off, you know, about who you are, how you got into politics, how you became the sheriff, and um, what is your main ultimate goal as far as helping people? Because you're a person that really care about community, you care about people, and I know that was a lot of questions in one, so I'm going to let you take it from there. I'll try to synthesize it as best as I can, but but thank you for that lead in. Uh, it's good to see you and, and Ken, who I know is working the board here. Um, well, real quickly, I come from an, uh, an immigrant father. I'm uh, the first Iranian-American sheriff in the United States, least currently serving of any major city in the country. Iran is a lot in the news these days, so sometimes I often hear people in context to stuff that's happening internationally and globally. But when my father came to the country, where he met my mother in Chicago, where I was born, um, he um, was working as a security guard at the YMCA, and throughout his life until he had passed away, he ended up running the Chicago YMCA. So I was exposed to that level of community service um, with communities that were often disadvantaged. And then through my mother, um, she became the EEOC director. Um, she was a civil rights leader and a feminist in the late 60s and early 70s and became a state worker after my folks had divorced in the state of Rhode Island for over 25 years in fighting really for civil rights um, in the workplace. And so I was really absorbing, I think, um, the values and ethoses of both my mother and father uh, as I was with them and alternated between them. Uh, and I think that that helped shape my politics. And then when I went to undergraduate, I went to a Jesuit university uh, and another university in St. Louis. Um, and I was brought up kind of under liberation theology about the activism about Central America. And that really honed in on my politics. And then I got into public interest law uh, because I, be I believed in um, really helping disadvantaged and distressed communities. And for the last 30 years, that's what I've actually been doing. And I apply that in law enforcement. I think the criminal justice system has been uh, designed to be uh, incredibly unfair and unjust, uh, especially to um, disadvantaged and distressed communities, to communities of color. And I decided that people of my political spectrum should not fear being in law enforcement or paramilitary institutions. Uh, or even in the military. I'm actually told I'm the last uh, elected official that's a military veteran in San Francisco. I didn't even know that that's until somebody asking. told me that, unless somebody corrects the record. So I try to apply all that into the kind of work we've done together. Um, and it's really uh, improving public safety while reducing our jail population as best as we possibly can so that lives are improved for people that don't return back to the criminal justice system. And I think we're all working for the same thing. Well, that's incredible. And it's good for the people to get to know just who you are and what your um, vast knowledge and upbringing into the movement of working with people and being exposed to it by your parents. That's a great thing. So we can kind of see that you're really proud of how much you've accomplished throughout the life. It gives some context, I guess, yeah. And it's a, it's a question I don't always get about sort of my background and my family's background. And I'm proud enough where I, I believe, especially through my wife's own background, she being Venezuelan and I being Iranian-American, with some Russian in me, um, that um, our son will benefit handsomely, I think, from it too. So tell me, how, how did you feel then when you – became one of the board of supervisors and and tell us in contact uh um the barriers you had to overcome to advocate for people who as you know in criminal justice it's about com more about community safety than the rights for 
prisoners or ex-convicts. Agreed. Absolutely. Right. When I became supervisor, elected in 2004 for District 5, which encompasses Haight-Ashbury, the Fillmore, Western Edition, Japantown, other inner sunset, other uh, neighborhoods, you know, I felt that both government and community and law enforcement were just surrendered to the high crime norms that took place. And I disliked the fact that there was this apathy from everybody about what was occurring in the community. And I just wouldn't settle for that. And so I really pressed hard for community policing. And when I found the police to resist me about just simple features like walking a beat, you know, where there had been serious you know, public safety challenges, distress, but I wanted police to walk beats just to get to know the community and the community get to know them. But I never expected the amount of blowback that I would have gotten from the police um, that that actually caused me to develop a very close relationship with Sheriff Mike Hennessy. Because I said, if the police weren't going to help us, I'd go to the deputy sheriffs. Mm -hmm. And that was a conversation I started in 2005. Um, and when the deputy sheriffs weren't poised to do this, I legislated uh, a number of laws to require a level of attention that just wasn't there and the neglect by city government and law enforcement to the communities. And I didn't want, I didn't want conquerors. I didn't want sort of an oppressive presence. What I wanted is what didn't exist except in affluent communities. And that was a level of trust building mechanisms that President Obama and his 21st century policing was actually predated by many years before that. That is almost old guard and old fashioned way of complete of policing. You know, you get to know the officer who's walking the beat and the officer knows them. And those are the features that really build that level of rapport that had dissipated many er years earlier. So I wanted that returned and I wanted to hold that accountable. And I build on that in my um, aspirations to help reform further in law enforcement. I also believe that when we had the second largest population in public housing, I couldn't understand why services weren't built into the very neighborhoods that people were returning from county jail system. You know, for like better family reunification, job vocational placement. I mean, we put the first one-stop job training center and placement in the Western Edition, uh, the Safeway off the Fillmore. You know, so it was that level of I just thought just common sense strategies that were long overdue. And I think that that really helped prepare me in my run for sheriff after Sheriff Mike Kennedy decided he wanted to retire. You know, and then towards the end of my supervisor days before I became sheriff, state prisoner realignment was being born by the high courts and Governor Brown. And I authored about a half a dozen laws um, that prepared San Francisco, ordinances that prepared San Francisco in anticipation of realignment. And fast forwarding in my time as sheriff, we've done very well by realignment in this county, this city, much better than, frankly, almost any other county in the state of California. Yes. Um, in fact, in San Francisco, it used to be one of the highest uh, in incarceration, well, in recidivism. That's right. Across the uh, state of California. I couldn't understand and why that was the case. And that number was in the high 60s, 65 to 71 percent is where it fluctuated. And that remained unchanged for at least 20 years while they were counting. You know, before that, they really didn't have any sort of understanding. But now it's dropped considerably. I hope it stays dropped. I'm concerned about this changing San Francisco mm -hmm. and the class divide, the economic class divide of uh, people who can afford to be here versus those who cannot and how that might translate into the criminal justice system. That's a hot topic. But, but more into what Sheriff Ross Mercurini have done, um, people don't really know like the programs that they have within the San Francisco County Jail, what you're doing for reentry, what you're doing for like parenting, those type of um, um, programs that are in place there, but there's one program that you really help author that I want you, would like for you to just take a couple of seconds to talk about this really successful is the No Violence Alliance Project, the NOVA Project. Well, it, that goes back to my activism and advocacy when I was a supervisor before I was sheriff because I went to Sacramento to fight for the dollars, the first $500,000 grant when I was a supervisor 
this is long before I even decided I was going to run for sheriff, um, for the institution of NOVA, No Violence Alliance. And thanks to people like yourself, Lou Gordon, CJ, CJ, so many others that are involved, Kathy Davis, your partner, um, you know, really has seen ups and downs in, I think, the focus of NOVA because it really required us to re-up our commitment uh, in making sure that we were dealing with a more complicated um, you know, population that was coming through our system. And NOVA has really been one of the most effective responses to that in a post-custody environment. Well, another to your credit, there's a couple of more to your credits too, because you help also author, before we say goodbye at the end of this, I want, <laughs> Quick. I want you really help co-author one of the first pods in the nation uh, collaborating with the San Francisco Adult Probation. We did. The it's called pod. the Reentry Pod, which we got the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation and some Sacramento legislators to invest in a pilot laboratory reentry pod, which you've been a very big help in, to deal with um, whether it's the youth, meaning young adults in our pod, or seniors in our pod, coming together, we're dealing with the very specialized criminogenic needs so that they don't recidivate. But there's so many things, like we're the first county jail system in the United States to reduce the visiting age from 18 to 16 so we can better, better reunification between children of the incarcerated and uh, of the incarcerated parents and their guardians. First county jail system in the United States to institute Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, is part of our normal discharge planning so people are signed up for health insurance. First county jail system in the state of California to institute the Birth Justice Project. And I think we're being interrupted because I know there's not much time. Well, there, we, <laughs> we know since you've been there, there's been a lot of firsts. And we want to have you back on so we can go further into the discussion. So I'm sorry it was so, so rushed. So people can I'm get sorry to, was so rushed. to know you. But, yeah. you know, you gave a good amount of vast <laughs> information for right now. For them to get to know who not only who the Sheriff Ross Mercurini is, but who's Ross Mercurini is. Thank you for the question, Frank. Thank and you. It's been a pleasure. we appreciate having you. Thank you. Thank very you much. very much. All right, All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Sing it. Go my mind with the truth. Tell me. Go my mind with the truth. Go my mind with the truth. Now I'm gonna live.